Welcome to another episode of the Trusted Advisor podcast and video series powered by the Retail Solutions Providers Association. Our goal on the pod is to accelerate the success of today's and tomorrow's leaders in the retail IT industry. I'm Jim Roddy back with you again. Thank you so much for joining us. This will be a special solo episode of the podcast, and we're going to be getting back to having guests later this month. But today I wanted to share with you some thoughts that I have about our ever-changing industry. You can call this a a Roddy rant uh, if you like. But before I rant, we have to make sure we thank our sponsors who support the Artist Bay community and make this podcast and video series possible. Our platinum sponsor for 2022 is Blue Star. Our gold sponsors are Brother, Cocard, Heartland, ScantSource, and Shift4. To receive the benefits of an RSP membership or RSP sponsorship, email membership at gorspa.org. All right, so industry change leads to personal change as well, right? It's not just affecting the company, the organization as a whole, it's affecting the individuals inside of those organizations, whether it's new business models, mergers and acquisitions, or new technologies that we're wrestling with every day in terms of what's gonna work, what's only gonna be a fad, what's really gonna be there for the long term, where am I gonna make money, what's gonna be sustainable? I've kind of become, by you know, by fire, uh, an expert on change management this year, right? Tested by fire. I was named CEO of the RSPA in January, so that was a big change. And then also, my family had decided to move from Erie, Pennsylvania, to Raleigh, North Carolina. Did our first big move, drive you know the big rental truck uh, all the way down south, and then we drove our uh, vehicles. Our entire family came with the rest of our stuff uh, in July. So this is the first podcast we're recording in the new studio. If you're watching on YouTube, you might say. That looks a lot the same as your old studio. Well, that's what we were trying to do uh, as well. But I have to say off camera a little bit, um, there are some bare walls and some boxes that are off screen for sure, which will be taken care of uh, at the right time. So that was a big personal change for me, but I also experienced change firsthand late July at Retail Now 2022 in Orlando, really about our changing industry. So we had about 1,500 folks uh, attend the event at the Gaylord Palms, but the makeup was different from what we've seen at past Retail Now events. Sometimes folks have said, oh, this has really become a payment show. I see a ton of people here who are playing in the payment space. Well, we just crunched the numbers, and from an exhibitor standpoint, only 13% of the exhibitors were payments focused. And then if you look, nearly half of the exhibitors on the show floor were ISVs, those independent software vendors. Now, a skeptic might think, well, maybe the show floor got small and those payments people just went away is what happened. Actually, what happened is the show floor grew from 111 in 2021 to 168 this year. We actually sold out the show floor. And 49 of those exhibitors were first-time exhibitors at retail now. Now I'm recording this pod about two weeks after the show, so we've had a chance to be in contact with uh, those new vendors, uh, the new exhibitors, and asking them how the experience went for them. They've all been super positive about it, right? They're planning on not just returning, but several of them are asking us, how do I get a bigger booth? Where can I be on the show floor that I could have this bigger booth? So that's obviously that influx of new exhibitors is good from an RSPA standpoint, but I think it's even better for the resellers in our space. And here's why I think that way. Retail Live 2022 really set the stage for a new and improved retail IT channel ecosystem. And here's how I think that helps resellers. I can probably best spell it out from an example standpoint. So even before the show started, Avar came up to me and congratulated me on a successful event. And I thought to myself, I just did some traveling. Did I travel on a time machine or did I sleep through the event? Like, why am I being congratulated and before we got started? But this VAR said that he identified at least three dozen new vendors on the show floor map who could help his company add new products and services, increase his recurring revenue, help him appeal to new prospects, and also help him become stickier with his current merchants. And he said to me with this really big smile, he said, the merger of managed services uh, in our industry it's finally here. This show isn't just about point of sale and payments anymore. Our industry is finally merged with the managed services space. Another VAR told me the day that the show started, he said, RSP 2.0 isn't something that's a future. RSPA 2.0 is here today. 
And I'd say every reseller I talked with or every, you know, VAR ISV hybrid or every DISD direct independent software developer, that's what we're kind of calling the new VAR, somebody who's appealing to a niche market, bringing their own niche software, but they're wrapping around it. Uh, hardware and services and other software oftentimes, the DISD, every one of those solution providers I talked with, they were excited about the new opportunities that they were seeing. They saw the show as really one-stop shopping to help them transform into that total solution provider. That's something that they want and have wanted for years, and that's something that their merchants want as well. They want you know one throat to choke or one back to path. So if you've been engaged in what used to be called the POS channel, but is now in reality really the retail restaurant grocery and cannabis it channel if you watch that traditional pos channel you might be skeptical about resellers wanting to become total solution providers right there have been at times just lifestyle dealers who they're selling the same products and doing the same thing with the same customers year after year after year and many of those folks lack sophistication because they were doing the same thing they weren't trying to see what's around the corner and really uh pressing the envelope i remember years ago at the retail now show you know when there was the emergence of the as a service business model and uh resellers becoming a total solution provider i talked to one reseller on the show floor and he said whoa I'm just a POS guy, right? I'm just a cash register guy, and that's you know the limit of how I'm gonna uh, expand my organization. Well, I have to say, I didn't see him this year on the show floor, and I didn't meet many people like him at retail now. The VARs at this year's show, and really throughout our industry, I think they're more sophisticated from both a technology perspective and from a business perspective, right? They're offering far more technologies and services and they want it on a recurring revenue basis because they see how that bids, builds the value of their business and how it enables them to remain independent, right? They're not just reliant on one provider or one technology for all their revenue. We also saw something really interesting this year, a lot of VARs inside of the booths at retail now. That's really how tight their partnerships with their ISV partners have become. And tied in with that, because about half the show floor featured software companies who could not only work with resellers, but also integrate with each other as software providers, we saw, I, I guess you would call it like cross-pollination of exhibitors talking about how could they multiply each other's go-to-market abilities, right? It wasn't just the exhibitors talking to the folks who were wandering down uh, the, the hallways there. They were going booth to booth and making sure that they were seeing what other opportunities they had there. And also the expo hall was busy all the way through the final hour of the show's final day. And, you know, I have to say, uh, you know, my responsibility from an RSP standpoint, I'm looking to see how traffic was on the show floor. You know, I'm walking back and forth looking at uh, each one of the aisles. Oftentimes on the show floor, but they say you can throw a bowling ball, you know, down the aisle. I could not do that uh, with any one of the aisles that we saw, again, right up to that final hour of the final day. Really, really high engagement. Folks there, not just to see their old friends, but to make new friends and make new partnerships. So the way that I see this is, so our industry has always been interconnected to some degree. But to me, this is really the dawn of extreme connectivity in our community. And so the question is, how do we as an industry, how do we as a community, how do we fight off those giant channel unfriendly players, the ones who are spending, spending millions of dollars on marketing, promoting a, a beautiful but a, a really simplistic POS system? How do we do that? I think we do it by working together to create personalized, niche-focused technology and service offerings, bundling those together. If we do that, the big boys aren't going to be able to compete with that. So also, I was on the Retail Now main stage for a few minutes during the general session. And one of the things that I shared is that when we spread our fingers apart, right, when we do that, our hands don't have much power, right? It's easy to get injured, right? You can, you can stove your finger, you can break it and dislocate it. But if we make a fist, if we band together and work as one community, boy, we are powerful and we are also protected from anything that's going to come our way. Again, I think Retail Now 2022 set the stage for a new and improved retail IT channel ecosystem that we can all benefit from. It's time for us to leap forward, and we need to do it together. Well, that does it for this episode of The Trusted Advisor. I hope you enjoyed my commentary. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the RSP YouTube channel and The Trusted Advisor podcast so you never miss an episode. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd rate us wherever you find your favorite podcast. My personal philosophy is the more stars, the better. 
Before we go, we want to say thanks to RSPA Director of Marketing and Strategic Partnerships, Chris Arnold, for his production work, Joseph McDade for our music, and last but not least, thanks so much to you for listening. Our goal at the RSPA is to accelerate the success of our members in the retail IT ecosystem by providing knowledge and connections. For more information, visit our website at gorspa.org. Thanks for listening and goodbye, everybody.